Welcome to Geneva. It's here in these gigantic exhibition halls that the 82nd edition of the Motor Show will take place. Behind the scenes, trends, what are your expectations? Off we go. This makes me think of luxury, a lot of beautiful cars and beautiful things to see. It is one of the biggest events that we have here in Geneva. It's a great opportunity to see the latest cars. It's a quality show where beautiful models are being presented. For me, it's the show in Europe. It's cool. There are a lot of pretty cars. There are a lot of people. There's a good vibe. It's nice. It is a revolutionary show. Beautiful cars, all electronic products. To see beautiful cars, technological innovations. We will try to have access to the stands and to take beautiful pictures. In the spring, Geneva is the meeting place for the car industry. It is well known for its human size and its neutral dimension. The fact that it takes place at the beginning of March is very important. Of course, we don't give priority to any brand or country over another, and I think that it is really appreciated by the exhibitors to know that they have every chance and that they are all being treated on an equal footing. This 2012 edition will gather no less than 260 exhibitors. For these manufacturers from all over the world, Geneva means a real economic boost. It is the beginning of the year, the car manufacturers don't really know what this year is going to look like, so it is a great way to assess the car market. And since everyone wants to be here, it's an important thing. Three years ago, the Geneva Motor Show was the first automobile international show to dedicate a space to the alternative propulsion and green technologies, the Green Pavillon. In 2012, it's under this marquee that the top manufacturers will unveil the vehicles that are finally ready to be put on the market. What the manufacturers do is that they mainly present the mass market vehicles that they sell at more than 100,000 piece, so the alternative cars end up hidden in the back. That's why the Green Pavillon is the ideal place for the visitor who is really interested in these cars. Last but not least, a 500-meter circuit where all the visitors will be able to try what might become their next hip car. So the trends, the hits of 2012s. BMW had fun with the magic workshop of the brand. They took a diesel motor and turned it upside down, shaked it all around and made something amazing with it. Otherwise, to talk about more serious cars, so to say, there's the new Kia with Seed. They come with a whole new range, new motors, a new design, and it might have the same damage on the competitors that the Hyundai i30 and i40 had. There is also, of course, the new Range Rover Evoque that we've always loved for its new concept with the new evolution, and this year is going to come as a gift for us as a convertible. Peugeot has the car no one can miss. It is the big comeback of the 208 with her special variation with the 208 GTI. So there again, we take a myth, we upgrade it, we put new technologies to it and we bring it back. The rebirth of the Honda with the NSX, it's a concept car for the moment. It shouldn't be out before 2013, 2014, but we were already able to see it on other shows and it's the first time it's coming to Geneva. And I promise it's worth it. You have to come and check it out. The car is awesome. There are plenty of things to see. The car of the year 2012 will be announced at the Geneva Motor Show. It is the first time and it will be the event of the show. Which one will be the lucky winner? There are seven nominees, the Volkswagen Up, the Toyota Yaris, the Range Rover Evoque, the Opel Ampera, the Ford Focus, the Fiat Panda, and the Citroën DS5. 59 journalists from 23 European countries have tried all the cars and will vote for the best car. They must be available in at least five countries and have an expected sales volume of 5,000 a year. The jury consists of experts only. Everybody's very experienced with cars. Everybody's doing it for, for quite a long time. We are, of course, the voice of the customer. We're trying to find out which car leads into the future, 
helping the, the consumers to make the best choice. In selecting the car of the year, they use the following criteria, design, comfort, safety, economy, handling, performance, functionality, environmental requirements, driver satisfaction and price. Technical innovation and value for money are particularly important factors. The winner will be hard to we pick. We have a couple of striking designs, as in the Range Rover Evoque and Citroën DS5. We have a couple of environmentally interesting cars. Opel Ampere, of course, the Jaris Hybrid, and again, the diesel hybrid from Citroën. We have three cars that are all over very good. Volkswagen Up, Ford Focus, and the Fiat Panda that offers great transportation for people for, for not very much money. So how should the jury compare these cars? The tension is at its highest peak. The judges have already decided. Check us out tomorrow to finally find out which car has been awarded the Car of the Year trophy. And there will be many other surprises.